Lori Saldana has been a politician in town and an office holder for many years. Uh, she was elected to the state assembly some time ago, and then she almost won a primary for Congress in 2012 and uh, ran for mayor just two years ago. So she's been a well-known figure in San Diego and uh, has a very well-known name and has attracted a lot of votes. Lori has this fantastic uh, ability to detect injustice. It's almost as if she has another super uh, sensory ability to do that. And when she does, you can't stop her. She will just deal with it. And uh, she's done things that are very, uh, that political advisors would, would instruct her never, never to do in San Diego, where yeah. she's from and where she's now running again for office. So um, Lori's a person of that kind of integrity uh, and um, she doesn't really budge on that kind of thing. So it's a, it's a different, she's different in that way from other politicians I've worked with. As chair of the Legislative Women's Caucus, she convened hearings on military sexual assault. She also championed policies to improve education and housing opportunities to support veterans and military families. But Lori Salania, as she says today. How do you think being a woman affects the challenge of your race? Well, I think across the board, when a woman is running, it changes dynamics around. Uh, as for, of course, this year, we're encouraging more women to run, but we have to be very strong. We have to show that we're leaders, and sometimes people interpret that as a negative when women, uh, you know, when we streak directly, when we speak strongly. Um, sometimes we'll, we'll say something and people will turn it around from being, oh, well, she's um, assertive, you know, a man would be called assertive to, oh, well, she's rude. <laughs> Um, and in fact, there's training going on this year to encourage women who are running for office for the first time to kind of handle those, uh, not only those reactions, but be prepared because sometimes you get some very emotional reactions to your candidacy that uh, because people are just not accustomed to seeing women being in, in positions of leadership. Yeah. So wow. all the more reason we need to be out there and, and representing and changing that. The sexism, is, sexism is so prevalent everywhere and I've really learned this because I've worked with Lori on another campaign before and um, I'm a guy who grew up with two brothers and went to an all boys high school and I didn't really see it until I worked with someone who was uh, put upon by it everywhere um, whether it's choosing who goes first in a debate or something like this they are always generally the approach is that they're dismissive and um, it's uh, strictly, strictly sexism. They also feel like they can get away with bullying her more. What do you find is the most effective way to overcome discrimination, especially in politics? Uh, oh boy, there's so many different ways. I mean, uh, first, again, just keep showing up and uh, don't be discouraged. Uh, stay on focused on your goals and remember that it's not just about you as an individual, that you are representing uh, sometimes hundreds of thousands of people that need that leadership and that need that diversity and representation. So uh, when things get tough, I, uh, I just have to remind myself, it's tough for me right now, but what an opportunity I have to be a leader to represent people who don't have a chance to do the kinds of things that might happen if I'm there making changes. Uh, so you just kind of keep your eyes on the prize, as they say. What obstacles have you faced so far in this campaign that have been significant to the way that you ran your campaign? Uh, I think I'm, I'm spending less time in party politics and more time talking to people who are not partisan, uh, you know, that, that, I guess you'd call them the average voters. I was at Madison High School where I graduated and we did the national walkout and I spoke to the students about the importance of voting. Those are the people that give me hope, they inspire me, especially these young people that are saying, look, time is up on guns. Uh, so I think what has changed is the party politics have gotten very toxic, very negative, very nasty. And uh, when I feel myself starting to kind of get drawn into that, I back away and say, no, let's just go talk to people um, and get out of those partisan bickering arguments. That's not what the voters want. They want people to be problem solvers, to stay positive and focused. And uh, so if there's one thing that's changed this year, it's that I'm, I'm really not as committed to being part of partisan party politics. Is there one opponent of Lori's that seems to be a bigger threat than the rest? Is there one that stands out? Absolutely. The, uh, right now, the big threat for us is, uh, uh, I think, the, our, our most well-funded opponent, who is not only well-funded because uh, he's, he's got a great 
great advocate and his wife who's a powerful local legislator and she is chair of the California uh, State Assembly Appropriations Committee. So she's the gatekeeper on who gets what in California. And she's been able to leverage that to get her husband all kinds of endorsements and get her husband all kinds of campaign contributions and get her get the county, the county party endorsement. And he's a former Republican, so he couldn't have done any of this on his own. But it makes him a very formidable candidate because he, he now has resources. And resources are very hard to come by in politics. Political money is hard to get. What we have to do is, uh, it, it's really hard to raise money for a race like this. So, especially when, you know, that candidate is, he, people are, People are afraid to give our candidate money because the candidate that uh, has all the money is um, also uh, powerful and locally in the political structure, and so and she's very vindictive about who gives money. So people are afraid to give money or do anything to help us because wow. they may suffer her wrath. Well, it's a good question. The one prediction I, I feel confident in making is that this will go to a runoff. Uh, the county races, if somebody wins a majority in the June primary, they win the seat outright. But you've got, like I said, three well-known people and two other fellows who are pretty impressive. So it's highly unlikely anybody will, will uh, win a majority. Um, Saldana has a tough path, I think. Uh, most people, uh, you know, the conventional wisdom is that, that it would likely be a Nathan Fletcher and Bonnie DeManis in the runoff. Uh, they've got a lot of institutional support behind them. They've got big name ID. And like I said, most of labor is behind Nathan Fletcher, and Bonnie Dumanis has a lot of the Republican power structure behind her. But I wouldn't count out Lori Saldana. Like I said, I think it depends if her support from the, the family labor working families council uh, puts in enough to help her out. Uh, so it would really come down to her, Fletcher, and Dumanis, I think, and two of those will move on to November. But one thing to keep in mind, you know, I mentioned some of the sort of the, the shortcomings, if you will, and controversies about Lori Saldana. Bonnie Dumanis and Nathan Fletcher also have their baggage. So the campaign hasn't really got going. So I, I think we need to see how tough the campaign will be. I think it will be, uh, you know, a bare knuckle campaign and a lot of the dirty laundry will come out. So that could play into this. How do you try to win over voters that may not normally vote democratically? Uh, well, I've always had good luck with crossover votes, and I think I tell people, look, voting is not about partisan politics. Voting is the core action you take as a member of a democratic society. And we're, I don't care who you vote for as much as the fact that you're voting. We need people to get engaged, get involved, and understand voting is what keeps our democracy flourishing.